I don't think it's any secret how one-sided the Chicago Bears team is. They're currently the fourth best team in points per drive given up. Their defense has been outstanding this season. Their offense is second worst in points per drive. The only team they're ahead of is the New York Jets. They're currently sitting behind teams like Washington and the Giants and Denver and Dallas. They're behind all of those teams. So what is going wrong? Well, a lot of people are blaming the coaching, and there is a lot of reason to do that. One of the things that I've actually talked about in a previous video, and I'm going to talk about it here, is they need to give Allen Robinson more opportunities. Allen Robinson is a true number one receiver, and there's so many times on crucial third down situations where you want to rely on your true number one receiver that they're just not even giving him these opportunities. Like on this play, this is a third down and eight. And you see two receivers are running routes to the top of this on the top of the screen. Uh, one is going to be just running a go route, and then the other one just simply runs a quick route to the outside. Typically, the reason you do this is it gives your receiver, who's currently uh, closest to the sideline, just a better angle to be able to get open. You know, there's one less defender in the area who could potentially make a good read and knock the ball away. You just have the other receiver run a, you know, it's essentially just a setup route. He's just helping set up the other receiver get open. So if you had to guess in between the plus receiver and the slot receiver, which one do you think Robinson should be? Clearly, he should be the plus receiver, which is the one closest to the sideline, because that's the guy Foles is probably going to want to throw to. Instead, Robinson is currently the slot receiver on this play. He's running a setup route, and it makes very little sense. Foles wants to hit him. He's under pressure quickly, so he kind of just throws one to Robinson. But, you know, that play, it wasn't complete. It was never going to work regardless. It just wasn't because it wasn't far enough down the field. And on a third down, the best case scenario on that play was it was going to gain five yards. The only way that results in a first down is if Robinson makes the catch and is able to get out of a tackle, which is just so, there's such a small chance of that happening. That's a clear problem, but I should be fair to Nagy to some degree because he's getting a lot of criticism. A good amount of it is deserved. He will at times make some good play calls. I thought this one was a good play call. Tennessee is in zone coverage, which is what they like to do. And what Chicago had been doing a lot earlier on in the game was they were doing these, you know, what you see on the screen, which is a play action quarterback rollout. But they had been doing it to the short side of the field. And the short side of the field is basically you see how they're lined up on the hash marks that are to Foles' left. Well, typically they would, in this position, have Foles roll out to his left. Now they're mixing it up and having him roll out to his right, and it's a pretty good idea. You know, I like mixing things up like this, sort of establishing a regular thing you do and then going against it. It's a good setup uh, and a really a good uh, payoff for Matt Nagy. Because watch, Foles does roll out the other way, and you see Tennessee was not expecting this. They were very much expecting the rollout, if there was a rollout, to be to the top of the screen. And I mean, this works out perfectly because uh, the player who I have in the black circle closest to the bottom of the screen the reason why he's currently you know at the numbers right now is because there's another Chicago player in the area and he has to take away that player whereas the other player in the black circle he's much closer to the top of the screen you know he's past the hash marks on that side simply because he thought it if it was either going to be a running play or roll out to that side he wasn't expecting to roll out to this side now Jimmy Graham is wide open Foles easily makes this throw Graham's able to pick up some yards so that's my thing about Nagy. He is not incapable of making some good plays. He really isn't. He is incapable of capitalizing on them, or at least he has been so far through this season. Watch, this was the very next play. You're going to see that Jimmy Graham is in motion, and you see a player follows him. Uh, this gives you a pretty good idea. This is probably going to end up being man coverage, uh, and it is man coverage. And so at this moment, if you're Nick Foles, he should audible. Why should he audible? Because look at what the play is. The play you see on your screen right now is designed to beat zone coverage. It, it is really ineffective against man. It's a play action, and you have two receivers who are running routes that are going to be pretty deep and cutting over the middle. If this was zone coverage, it would be a really good concept because the play action will get the linebackers to move in. You then have your number two receiver run a route that's going to essentially push the safety who is in the middle of the field further deep, so linebackers are in safety is deep this creates a gap in the middle where your other player can run over there get open and make the play but against man it's not really that effective because you know the linebackers are going to just be covering their own guy and you know so it, it just it doesn't have the same effect 
that it would have had if it was in zone. And Foles is now well aware that this is man coverage, or at least he should be, but he isn't going to cancel out of this play. As you see, Foles tries to make it anyway, and, you know, as we could have expected, no one really gets open, and not only that, but Foles just doesn't have the time to get someone open because this was also a blitz on Tennessee's end, which it's much more likely that teams are going to blitz in man than in zone, so he could have thought that could happen as well. The play action was a very slow play action, and to me... I don't know who to blame here because I don't know exactly how the Bears do these things because every team does it differently. I don't know if really Nick Foles was supposed to switch out of this play if he saw that it was man and he just misread the play, which I don't think would happen because this is a very easy read to make, which means that the other option would just be that there was no switch out of the play. This was the play that uh, they were supposed to run no matter what. Uh, and if that's the case, it just doesn't make any sense because, of course, Tennessee might play man. And it just, it, to me, these are the signs of not great coaching unless Nick Foles just misread the play, which is possible. I mean, we also have to blame the offensive line for not being able to block. But, I mean, they basically have their second string entire offensive line out there at this point. So I kind of expect that. And listen, you got to blame Foles a little bit for the poor performance against Tennessee as well. This one's a great one. It's cover three zone, and it's again going to be a rollout. See, this time you see how it's the rollout to the short side. They're lined up on the hash marks closer to the top of the screen, and Foles is going to run in that direction. And, you know, you have Jimmy Graham running a route that's going to try and get in the gap in coverage. This is a play that can work out. And you know it is because Chicago ran this play about a dozen times against Tennessee. Once this play starts, I mean, you can make an argument that Jimmy Graham isn't open here. To me, Jimmy Graham is as open as any player had gotten for Chicago all game long. It's a tough throw. Foles is on the run. You have multiple Tennessee players kind of in the middle of the, the path. So... It's a very difficult throw for Foles to make, but I just think he has to take these chances. The reality is, this is a throw that you can make, especially with Jimmy Graham's height. You just, this is definitely a throw that's not, it's not a too risky play to make, but Foles just doesn't want to take this chance. Instead, Foles is going to just keep looking, eventually he throws it shorter, actually gets a decent completion, so that worked out, but there was no guarantee that completion was going to be there later on in the play. And, you know, still didn't get the first down, which throwing Jimmy Graham would have. To me, that's a mistake, in my opinion. I know some people that are more risk-adverse would say, no, good play. I think that's a mistake, especially when your offense is really struggling to get things going. I also think this Chicago offense is capable of the big plays every now and then. Like on this one, this is what Chicago loves. It's a Haas concept where you have uh, a receiver who runs deep. You know, usually your, your number two receiver is essentially the guy who's running deep towards the sideline. These can be good against this type of coverage. Personally, I would just rather have uh, my plus receiver run a go route. I just feel like it's a waste of a route to have someone, you know, basically just, again, do this setup. But it can work out and it's going to work out on this play. Watch, Foles takes the snap. He's able to have a receiver open, and he is able to make this accurate throw, and they get a big gain. And, you know, those big chunk plays are huge for this Bears offense because they can't really get consistent drives going. And part of me feels like they should try these types of plays more often, even if that's not my favorite uh, big play concept. It is one that absolutely can work out. So I do think they should try it more often. And I think Matt Nagy said right after this play, I should try this type of thing more often. And the reason I think that is because literally on the very next play, he would run the exact same concept, which to me is a bit head scratching. Why are we doing the exact same thing on back to back plays? And hopefully they somehow don't think it's coming, even though it literally happened the very play earlier. Admittedly, it's not the exact same thing because uh, on the last one, they had the same concept on both sides of the field. Now they don't. Instead, it's just, just on one side and you have multiple players running setup routes, which to me, I, I like this even less personally, largely because, yes, you now have two receivers who are essentially doing nothing. But the other exception is that now you have a safety who is deep. But there's only really one guy he has to worry about. Whereas the last time, he at least had to worry about, you know, one side of the field or the other. And Foles could just hit the other side. Now there's only one player running deep. So the safety can easily make this read. Watch how he's going to get over there, like, basically immediately. And this was nearly intercepted. It really was. Part of that is just because of the pressure. Nick Foles clearly didn't get uh, what he wanted on that throw. But at the same time, that could have been intercepted. The safety was easily able to run over and make that play. And honestly, I think even if Foles does get it where 
where he wants it, that still might be picked. I mean, that was a dangerous play, and it's a dangerous idea to run the exact same concept as you ran earlier, but this time with one less option. I mean, that's the easiest read in the world for a safety to make, and that's just not smart football. So Nagy does deserve some blame. Listen, the the real problem with this team is the offensive line. Like that's just the real problem with it. And until they get healthy, uh, they're just going to have some real trouble. Even when they get healthy, they're, they're not going to be great, but at least they'll be better than what they are now. There's still a lot of talk about people saying they should put in Trubisky, they should take out Foles. I think at that point, you're rearranging seats on the Titanic. Uh, I think that with the offensive line and with the play calling, uh, you know, you could have prime Aaron Rodgers in that quarterback. You're still not going to get too much going. I just think there's too much problems. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.